Welcome back. Welcome back. I pulled up Drowsy while you were gone. Oh, God. <laughs> I continue my... Drowsy track. is able to put people to sleep and can sense their person's dreams. It is also... it, So it knows what kind of dreams it would be eating. It eats dreams through the victim's nose. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it eats dreams through the victim's nose. <laughs> so it is said that Drowsy is standing over a person's pillow with their nose itches while they're asleep. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> That's disturbing. Drowsy has certain preferences for the dreams it eats. And it is known to love fun dreams and become ill from bad dreams. Oh. Hmm. It will rarely eat the dreams of adults, as the dreams of children uh, dreams of children are tastier. Drowsy remembers every dream that he's eaten and may show past meals to a person uh, that sl often sleeps by it. <laughs> hey, hey, you want to see what dream I just got yesterday? No, Aww. Drowsy, I don't care. <laughs> and it's just like, thump. Oh, this is a really nice dream. Oh, the kid's paraplegic. <laughs> <laughs> See, these are the kind of Pokemon I like. I like the creepy ones. And meanwhile, I squeal like a literal girl yeah. when a Pichu shows up <laughs> yeah. on screen. You're like, yes, Pichu! Uh, now we're on Hypno. Hypno is also able to put people to sleep. It can sit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it is known to reside away from humans on less traveled roads. Okay. If anyone comes by, Hypno will hypnotize them and eat their dreams. Okay. Does this one like to eat dreams through an ass? <laughs> no, it doesn't say. <laughs> um, while it awaits its prey, it apologizes its pendulum. Mm. So it just sits on the side of the road and polishes the coin. Yep. And waits. Yep. For you to come by, so it could put you to sleep and steal your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All right, so I gotta look up another one of my favorite Pokemon. Look up Raichu. I was gonna look up Grammar, so okay. I'm gonna do that first. Okay. This Why did so, I do that? This is so entertaining. I'm learning things I didn't know. <laughs> Wait, I don't even know. I thought you were in the gym, but that's fine. I'm I'm bouncing between the gym and the Pokemon Center because my Pichu can't survive for more than like five seconds. Okay, so this is Grimer. Due to its lack of solid form, it is capable of squeezing into any space or crevices with a relative ease. Yep. It uses this to penetrate sewage pipes so it may feed off the filthy wastewater inside. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> it happily consumes and thrives off of nearly any form of waste or refuge. <laughs> oh my god. It can be found in polluted lakes and streams as well as within, as well, well as within cities and factories where trash and industrial waste can be found. Huh. Interesting. I actually know when Al wouldn't mind having a grammar. I could just feed it on my yeah. trash. I wouldn't yeah. have to take it out. <laughs> just keep it in your toilet. <laughs> yeah. Here, Grimer. Here's my waste. <laughs> Here, Grimer, I'm pooping. And then <laughs> Time could, to eat. And then it could eat the poop out of the cat's litter box. It's great. Oh, <gasps> I didn't even think of that. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so this is Muck. It is a living biohazard, leaking toxins that instantly kill all plant life and touch it. Holy shit! <laughs> okay. No, Grimer! No! No! Get away from the oregano! No! <laughs> Even it being in close proximity to plants will cause them to wilt and die. Oh, that's sad. Extreme caution is advised in avoiding any contact with this Pokemon as an accidental brush up on can lead to severe sickness. No muck, no hugs. No muck, no hugs. I'll just get you another muck and you can hug the other muck. <laughs> and then they become one giant <laughs> muck that takes over the house. <laughs> the effect of this Pokemon can leave the landfill barren for three years. Damn. Damn. Yeah. It Damn. can live in my compost pile. In dirty residential areas where Pokemon throw trash or where people throw trash in the streets, it is certain to appear. It will readily consume any nearly any waste or refuse generated by people and Pokemon alike. It can be found in heavily polluted bodies of water, cities, and factories. Huh. You wanted me to look up Raichu? Yes. Cause Raichu Oh hi Krabby. Raichu is a walking contradiction. 
Raichu looks fat, but is really fast. <laughs> it makes no sense. It's loading. I love how we're just reading Bulbapedia like people couldn't look up the shit on their own. Like, hey, we're we're providing our own commentary. <laughs> yeah. Raichu ex exudes a weak electrical charge from all of its body and slightly glows in the dark. Oh, cool! And is capable of storing over 100,000 volts of electricity. Yeah, you have to be careful about around Raichu, though, because if it's constantly exuding um, electricity, that means it's going to have a magnetic field. Don't let your Raichu around your computer, or you will not have a hard drive. <laughs> However, it will become aggressive if it's stored too much electricity. Oh, yeah. To keep from reaching the state, it discharges electricity through its tail into the ground. Oh, it grounds itself. I forgot about that. This leads to scorched patches near its nest. Yeah. If Raichu's sacks are fully charged, its ears will stand straight up and the muscles will be become stimulated. Hmm. Cool. Interesting. Raichu is able to learn Volt Tackle. Nah. Yep. Alright, we're gonna look at Pichu. Yay! Since I'm here. Tiny Pichu. Hey, we have one of those. Yes. I should also look at Charizard. Hi, Pichu. Pichu is a social Pokemon known for its playful, mischievous behavior. It's usually found in groups and often touches tails with other Pichu to show as a showing of courage. Yep. Creating a shower of sparks that can make them cry. Aww. Aww. It is inept at storing electricity and may discharge if you use startled or subject to shock. So it pees itself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, this is a gym leader. Yeah, his name's oh, supposed shit. to be Brawly, but his name is Esteban. Esteban. <laughs> he has a Genghis Khan? Jesus. Genghis Khan. He does not have the leader <laughs> of the Mongols. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna look up this Pokemon now. I'm just gonna beat the shit out of everything with smiles. Shadow Punch. That's a weird move. Okay, here we are. Okay. Genghis Khan. Born in 1162. <laughs> <laughs> the great... <laughs> you couldn't even keep a straight face if you tried. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> it's rain was from spring of... 12.06 to August 18th of 2020. <laughs> Why are you so <laughs> Because I want to know more about this Pokemon. Genghis Khan does not carry a tiny version of him in his pocket. <laughs> I'm just imagining like regular Genghis Khan with like a weird marsupial pouch and then just a second head pops out of the <laughs> A tiny Genghis Khan. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, you know what? Whatever. Okay. <laughs> I was just gonna learn about some Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I don't have any potions. <laughs> Crap. Here, Charizard, eat an orange berry. Oh man, you look so much healthier. Oh man, he's all smiles. Reversal. Yeah, it's a fighting move. I'm flying, it doesn't hurt me. Alright, Kangaskhan, here we go. Kangaskhan is a nurturing Pokemon that protects its young at all costs. The baby leaves the pouch only rarely until it's three years old. In order to avoid crushing the baby, Kangaskhan sleeps standing up. Hmm. If the mother feels the environment is safe, it will allow the young out to play. However, it will violently attack anything that it sees as a threat. Yep. Regardless of how badly injured it becomes, the mother will not cease fighting until the young is safe. Yay! The Pichu wants to get Dream Eater. I'm gonna have a, compl a combination of Diglett and Pichu <laughs> that put Pokemon to sleep and then eat their dreams. <laughs> they want to be your haunter and game guy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you're, you're drowsy and... And hip yeah, bone meringue never hits, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Th that's one of the things I've found about Pokemon 
It, it, if the move's accuracy is anywhere less than 100, even if it's 99, it never hits. Mm -hmm. Ever. Oh my god. Yay! <sighs> I better pay attention since this is a Pokemon battle. Or whatever. <laughs> I was very entertained. Wait. <laughs> um, why don't you just get rid of... Okay, that's fine. Yeah, sleep talk I was never gonna use. Okay, well... Alright! Yeah, we have a Blastoise now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Are you my freaking God. kidding me? What am I supposed to do about that? Wait, what the hell is that? Wait, didn't we fight a Rayquaza earlier? Yes, we've already like, fought in episode one. two? Yes. Isn't he a legendary? Yes. Why do two traitors have a Rayquaza? <laughs> they are hackers. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very effective. I know. I, I, I forgot Smiles has Levitate. All that right, I will here accept. we go. Ray? I thought you were going to look oh, up Charizard. What? Nope, it's too late. I'm really going to Rayquaza. <laughs> Confuse you, little shit. And now it's using arm thrust. With its tiny little T-Rex arms. It's a dragon slash flying. Yes, I know. Which is why this battle's gonna take a fucking year. <laughs> it is able to soothe other members of the Weather Trio, even in their primal forms. That's Kyogre and, uh... I never remember the, the Ruby Legendary because... I didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> Rayquaza can live for Groudon, hundreds of millions right? of years. Is in... it Groudon? I have no idea. Rayquaza can live for hundreds of millions of years in the ozone layer, where it feeds on water and other particles. The Rayquaza is rarely seen by people. Yeah, why don't you tell these trainers that? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's find out. I think it's Groudon. Yep, it's Groudon. Yes! I don't even know what Groudon looks like. He's a big looking, like... He's he, a ground he looks, type Pokemon? He looks like Godzilla had a baby with a T-Rex that was made out of lava. Sweet. Uh, I'm gonna look up. I'm bored. <laughs> I'm bored! I'm looking up. You have officially just checked out of this game. <laughs> right now I have. <laughs> Right now, I'm just like, ooh, Pokemon! <laughs> I surprisingly don't know as much about Pokemon as I should. Yes, I meant Charizard. Don't question me. I have fat thumbs. <laughs> you, you, speaking of, you uh, mentioned the manga before. Yep. I have started rereading that because I love the manga. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to recommend any part of the manga, I would say read the gold and silver arc. And the Ruby and Sapphire arc. Huh. The Gold and Silver arc actually explains the, the kind of the idea behind the first seven Pokedex holders. Huh. That's um, red, yellow, green, blue, gold, silver, and crystal. Right. Um, it, it actually gives them archetypes, um, trainer archetypes, mm -hmm. which I think fit all trainers in some way, shape, or form. Right. Um, to kind of put it simply, uh, there's battler, trainer, um, healer, collector, or not collector, uh, trader, um, evolver, um, hatcher, and what was the seventh one? Catcher. Mm -hmm. So, um... I think it's it's kind of interesting to l try to figure out where you are in that mm -hmm. in that group. Like, right. I would consider myself a trainer and a healer um, because I like training up my Pokemon and I like hatching, you know, and keep keeping care of the small ones. You know, I, I like I like I like making my Pokemon happy, and that's part of what the healer is. Right. See, I just want one Pokemon. I'm going to evolve it into a Gengar, and then I'm going to run around town and scare everybody. <laughs> uh, and then somebody will be like, there's a cold spot in my house. <sighs> Leanne's Gengar is here. <laughs> god dang it. Uh, god, don't confuse me. Dang it. Um, 
Uh, but that's why I, re- I nickname all my Pokemon, too. Mm-hmm. I actually care about them. Right. Um, but I, I think the, the Gold and Silver arc is a really good... Mm-hmm. A, a really good kind of like, this is what Pokemon, being a Pokemon trainer is. Right. Kind of arc. Um, the yellow the yellow story is really good, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you have uh, the Ruby and Sapphire arc, which really is the first story arc in the series that contains any romantic interest between characters. Mm -hmm. And it also flips the characters on their heads. Right. uh, Based on what most people assume. Because in, for example, in the, um... Oh shit, I have ice! Duh! This is a dragon type! (laughs) Yes, dragon plague! Um, for example... Um, May is often considered the the contest mm-hmm. uh, person because in in the anime she's shown to do the contest. That's why she's there, right? To show off the contests. Um, she in in uh, the Ruby Sapphire arc. Her name is Sapphire, by the way. Mm -hmm. She is the daughter of Professor Birch. And she hates the contests. Oh, that's weird. Yes, it's great. (laughs) So, yeah, those two I especially like. No, Africa! But I have kind of a personal grudge against that game. And you will hate this too. Or uh, against that series, and you will hate this too. I know you will. Because I know you. Oh. So, they go through every group of games. Okay. Not just the originals, which means they go through the remakes. Uh-huh. Um, which include Fire Red and Leaf Green. Of course. Okay. Um, Why are you using fighting type this is a flying Pokemon? Because I don't have anything else and I'm <laughs> going to die. Um, the, the, fi- the whole point of the name Fire Red and Leaf Green... In in the in the manga, it's like, oh, Red is the main character of the first generation. He's the guy with the hat. Yep. You know, when you face him in Pokemon Gold and Silver, he is called Pokemon Trainer Red. Right. So he is Red. Okay. Everybody knows that. Okay. The rival is the question. Because when the games came out in America, it was red and blue. But in Japan, it was, it red, was and red and green. green. So translators had to figure out which one to go with. The American translators eventually settled on naming him Blue. Okay. Because that's what the American games were named. Right, okay. Okay. I'm I'm with you so far. Fast forward to Fire Red and Leaf Green. Oh, shit. Okay. There is a female trainer who was introduced earlier in the series. Actually, during the the first generation of the series. Her Mm -hmm. name was the other name. So, in... In this, in this case, her name is Green in the English version, uh-huh. in the American version. So I'm sorry, this fight is terrible. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, is it using my own move against me? Yep. God, I hate this thing. <laughs> um, I'm gonna end up dying. Uh, anyway, in yeah, the fire, punch. it slaps you with like those little beady T Rex hands. Yes. Look at them. So, in in the American version of Fire Red and Leaf Green, um, there's a problem. Okay. Because if you rewind all the way back to the first generation, Red Starter was Bulbasaur. Right. And gr- Green slash Blue Starter, the rival starter... Yeah, I'm gonna die. Um, <laughs> it's okay, I'll do it. Okay, you'll die. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the rival starter is Charmander. Okay. Fast forward to Fire Red and Leaf Green. Because of story reasons, I'm not going to get into them, they switch Pokemon. What? They switch starters. So Red now has Charizard, the fire type. The grass type, Bulbasaur, is now green, I mean blues. Uh, Fire red and leaf blue. Blue. 
The pun is ruined because of that translation error. It. <laughs> it's asleep. Despite that, though, the series is a really, really good read. It casts... If, if you've never seen Pokemon... Or, or if you've seen Pokemon Origin, mm -hmm. the little mini-series that they released mm -hmm. on the internet, yep. it's like that. It, it's a little more serious. Team Rocket is actually a legitimate threat in that manga. Yep. It's really cool. Why did I do that? I don't know why you did that. Why I, did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't mean to. But now it's confused. So... Like, Maybe that, it'll hurt itself. That, that was the thing that really drew me to it first, was that Team Rocket and all the bad guys, really, are shown as legitimate threats. Yeah. Instead of like they are in the games, they're just like, oh, we're gonna, you know, flood the entire world because reasons. <laughs> because whatever, right? And and then it, and then you're just like, haha, I'm a little kid and I beat all of you, yes. so you can't do that anymore. Yes! And I'm killing it's, this Rayquaza. Yes, you are. And then, yeah, it's it's just really stupid, the way they're portrayed in the games, but in the manga... Yeah! <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> in, the, in the manga, they're they're portrayed a lot as a... They're major threats mm -hmm. to the world, and it takes multiple main characters in order to defeat them. Right. It's not just one kid being an idiot, and, oh, look, I beat all these trainers, and, oh, man... <laughs> Now oh, they're man. going to stay Arm away from being Ted, bad guys forever. Armed level Ted Diglett just took out that Rayquaza you said was going to kill me. Remember what happened last time when you were like, I'm going to die. And <laughs> I had Diglett. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was against this, Rayquaza too. Yes. No. This Diglett is the MVP <laughs> of our team. <laughs> Giglet the Slayer. Giglet the Slayer. <laughs> Giggle the Rayquaza Slayer. Ah, oh, tip on top. That actually Holy might... Shit, it's at level 19. That actually might legitimately be one of those gym leaders' Pokemon. Oh, well, we're gonna put it to sleep. No, not secret power. Fuck out of here with that. What? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> we may need to grind. I can do that off camera. Or I can do... I can do... A special of just me grinding and be like, ah, oh, it's me. Ah. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Uh, Dream Eater! <laughs> yeah, you don't have Giggle to put the son of a bitch to sleep! What the fuck is Pedal Dance? That. <laughs> Go! Patoo! <laughs> Patoo! <laughs> I'm sorry, Patu. <laughs> we haven't been doing shit with Patu. Nope. Ugh. Pot eight O's. Well, let's see. Um, let's do. Covet. <laughs> well. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Fall in love with me, do it! Fall in love! What? Ow! Huh. That's not gonna be helpful at all. But we still have it. I don't know what it does, but we have it! Citrus Berry is like the uh, super potion of the berry world. I forgot! It's gonna activate whenever... Wow. Wow. So if you don't know, berries are only activated when their effect would be helpful. So, for example, health berries are only eaten when they take damage. They have to take damage in order for that to happen. Right. Because the sandstorm dealt one damage, potatoes ate <laughs> his berry. <laughs> next time on Stimpling <laughs> Rebel. <laughs> the next time we play Pokemon, it might just be me, and I might just gr go grind in that cave. 
if that's okay with you. Yeah. Um, if, be... if you do that, try to get everyone around level 15 or so. Yeah. That'd probably be where we would need to be. Um, what I'm probably going to do is I will... No catching Pokemon. Why not? No catching Pokemon. But... But I wanna... But I wanna... Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, crap! But I, I wanna... went inside! <laughs> but I wanna... I wanna... Ah! Oh shit, I'm outside. 